and the green flag comes out. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach is on. That looked good. Watch Justin Wilson in fourth, red and white car. He has the inside line on Pagano. New Garden looks to the outside. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Wow, did no, he, he no, make it. Yep, he, he didn't make it. It yeah. looked like he was wide. All right, buddy, keep it rolling here. Keep it rolling. Wow, too bad for Joseph Newgarden, the first rookie to start on the front row since Robert Dornbos at Kansas in 2009. But it would appear as if his race has come to an early end. Yeah, I got to go ahead. No full course caution yet. Race remains under green as Dario Franchitti has the lead. That was very surprising, Wally, because Joseph Newgarden had ducked behind Dario and then rethought it and decided to go around the outside. Now it goes full course caution. Yeah, I saw that too. It looked like he was gonna just drop back in and, and let things settle out, but instead he went to the outside of Dario and clipped the tires as he went through corner one. Guys, I talked to uh, Joseph's engineer, Nathan, just before the start of that race. He said, this guy didn't seem like he's intimidated by anything about being on the front row. He said, not at all. He does not put these guys on a pedestal. Got to say, maybe he should have just yeah. there in the first corner. Probably should have been a little more careful. It's Franchitti, Pagano, and Wilson, the top three at this point, as the first full course caution has come on to the racetrack because of Joseph Newgarden. And the Homatro safety team has arrived at the scene of the incident. Here it is. No contact between the two. He's just flatly outside the groove. You don't think they touched you, Wally? Ah, boy, he sure swung around pretty hard. I think this is a great angle right here. Let's see if the... Yeah, I think he did make contact. Yeah, I think so. He, that thing just got sideways really, really fast. Now Take here, another look. Here, Jan, is when he fell in behind Dario. That's yeah, too tempting, though, especially <laughs> when you're a new guy. <laughs> Let's see, take a look. Yes, oh, I yeah. believe there was contact because he just got sideways too hard there. So um, that's too bad. Hey, you got to give it to him for going for it. I mean, you know, it looked like there was plenty of room. All right, the incident is under review by the stewards. And that, of course, is the team of Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing. New Garden causes the first caution here at the Long Beach Grand Prix. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach on NBC Sports Network is brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. By Novolog FlexPen. Ask your healthcare provider about the benefits of FlexPen today. And by TireRack.com. Research, buy, deliver, install. Tire Rack. He passed four cars at the start of the race, started 13. He's currently up to ninth. Here's the start of the race. He's obviously easy to spot. Oh, wow, look at him go up the inside, Ryan Hunter Ray. But what? Yeah. And there is where New Garden came in contact with the tires. Everybody did a nice job of avoiding the tires that have been put out closer to the racing line. Here's Ryan Briscoe's on board. There's Ryan on your left <laughs> with Charlie Kimball. Hey, you know, the best opportunity to make moves like that is on a start or a restart. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's if you if your car's working good, your tires are at its best, and you can pass them, guys, it's the best time to do it. Down to Kevin with Joseph. Well, unfortunately, your best start ends in the first corner. What happened? Well, I don't know. I, I saw one replay, and um, I, I had a feeling that was going to happen. I just, you know, I, I, I thought I got alongside him. I gave him, I gave him the inside lane. I just got touched on the exit and went right into the wall. But, you know, maybe maybe it wasn't the, the right move. I was The plan was, like, you know, if he was breaking alongside of me, I would have just given him a lane and tucked right in. But, you know, I thought I had a good good run on him and, and got a good jump on him. So, um, you know, it's one of those tough breaks, man. I feel bad for the team, if anything. Probably should have just... Yeah, it's a it's a tough call. I mean, 
Should he have been penalized? They reviewed it and they said no penalty. Hey, that's up to the marshals, man. That's what they're there for. So I'm just a driver. I'm, you know, I'm hired out here to drive a car well for the team, and you know, I feel kind of bad for him right now. I feel like I didn't do my job. So um, probably something to think about, but certainly a good learning experience. Maybe I should, um, maybe I should think a little bit better before I go into it. But you never know. I mean, there's a couple different takes on it. I think, and um, you know, I'll certainly review it myself and see what I want to do in the future next time. All right, great pace this weekend for Joseph Newgarden, but an early DNF. I, I want to jump in here real quick. I don't think he did anything wrong. I, I think if he would have got had a little bit more room from Frankini, he could have pulled that pass off. So I don't think he should be beating himself up on that. Deal. All right, well, we got another two abreast restart coming up. That's Simon Pagino to your left. And there we go. Wow. Go, 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 go. Green's flying, man. <laughs> that was Graham Rahal just shot to the inside. Now we all have to get through here. Justin Wilson is up front going into turn one. And he got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Justin Wilson has the experience to get just that farther in front of Dario Franchini. Wow. Everybody around the fountain in good shape. And remember, this is all done without any kind of push to pass. It's all on the drive that you got when they said green, green. You can just see all the cars lurch. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of talk about how the Wind turbo Chevrolets accelerate more quickly. Well, Justin Wilson, of course, he was racing with Hondas, but that thing took off like a rocket. And Justin Wilson has not oh, shown yeah. yeah, making a move. Going to the inside of Simona de Silvestro. Elio carrying AAA colors once again. Whoa, oh, there you go, this. using the chrome horn as uh, Robin talked earlier. A couple of Penske cars right together behind Mike Conway. Of course, Ryan Briscoe, then Will Power. Briscoe and Power, the fastest qualifiers yesterday, starting 11th and 12th on the grid. Charlie Kimball, there's Graham Ray Hall. Right behind them is Ryan Hunter Ray in yellow and white. Ryan Hunter Ray says this is the track that means the most to him. He met his eventual wife, Becky, here. They were engaged here, and he will tell you that this is the race that his mom always was her favorite. And of course, he is a former winner here at Long Beach. Charlie Kimball, of course, started behind his teammate Graham Rahal. Now he leads Graham Rahal as far as the Ganassi duo. So nice job thus far by Charlie Kimball. I think guys were a little bit worried about this morning, Yana. Uh, their fuel, they were not getting the fuel mileage that they were hoping to get to make this thing a two-stop. Their, their goal was kind of like get everything you can because they're probably going to have to stop three times depending on how the how the cautions work out. They've had a little bit of help so far with that yeah. early caution. Riding on board with Kimball, who is sixth. That's the coolest shot I've ever seen. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's J.R. Hildebrand behind Simona de Silvestro. The National Guard colors number four. Be very interesting. You'll see a mix there. She, of course, is on the black sidewalls, and you can see clearly on board that JR has the red sidewalls early on. He should be able to be much quicker than if it turns out to be a long stint. Maybe that's advantage her. Kevin? Marco Andretti, we had said earlier, we expected him to pit earlier. They put tires out about two laps ago, then took them back. Now they've just gone back over the wall. So they've been going back and forth on what the strategy is. I'm guessing, guys, there's a concern here. If we get a lot of yellows, then it's going to be pretty difficult for a three-stop strategy to finish up in the front. Hildebrand. Running in 19th. Oh, and here he is moving around Simona de Silvestro. That was just straight horsepower there. <laughs> Chevrolet versus the Lotus. Rubens Barrichello is in the dark blue car behind. Marco get, get the car. Marco is in. He was on the primaries. Now he's on one of his three sets of sticker all 
entered it softer tires. And keep in mind, too, he gets out and he can run quick laps in clear traffic right now. Contact between Hildebrand and Marco a little earlier. Let's take a look. Ooh, oh, oh, yeah. Looks like somebody had locked a, a tire up about three or four cars up, and they kind of stacked up on it. Justin Wilson, while we're watching the action back in the pack, Justin Wilson continues to lead here. He's built up a three and a half second advantage over Dario. And this is the first time that Justin Wilson has led a race since from the pole at Toronto in 2010. He's there he is. Out, yeah, he is. Going. And three and a half seconds. Wow. As I said, he hasn't really shown much this year driving for Dale Coyne Racing at Barber two weeks ago. Started 19th and finished 19th. But he was very fast in qualifying yesterday and has the lead here in the early going this afternoon. There's the advantage he has over Franchitti. Right behind Dario is Simon Pagano. Thomas Townsend, this is huge for Justin Wilson. I mean, just two weeks ago at Barber, he was absolutely sideways out of control that whole race, just hanging on. It's going to be fascinating to see how the tire wear holds up on his car. So far, this is a massive improvement for him. Also for Dario, what a difference two weeks makes running to the front, Long Beach. Right now, Justin looks really strong. He really does. He uh, won the pole here in 2008. His best finish, however, was second in 2006 and 2010. Justin Wilson leads here with eight laps completed. Dario Franchitti second, followed by Pagano, Sato, and Dixon. We'll be right back. generation 201 horsepower Civic SI with a 2.4 liter IV tech engine to each their own only from Honda Honda proud partner of the IZOD IndyCar series it began with my big toe that was my first amputation that I had Berger's disease it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking my fingers started to go piece by piece first it was my left leg after my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, visit smokefree.gov. You may ask one question. Which tire category should I choose to get the most comfortable ride. There's a better place to ask questions about your tires. TireRack.com. Get the answers you need online or on the phone to find the right tires at the right price. TireRack.com. Research. Buy. Deliver. Install. If you were a race car driver, you get to say, I'm a race car driver. When people ask you what to do. I wanted to win this race so bad. You'd be a man amongst men. You'd command a rocket ship through nerve grinding courses. World waiting for you beyond the checkered flag. And fans everywhere would follow you and your sport. On IndyCar Mobile, live in-car cameras, streaming race control, and driver pit crew transmission to let you live the high octane dream. Download IndyCar Mobile now, only from Verizon. Back at Long Beach, there's Dario Franchitti, who is now running third. You saw just as we went to break on nonstop, Simon Pagano pass him. So Dario's third, and Takuma Sato on the blocks is running fourth and staying right up there with him. You know, Jan, I question if Franchitti doesn't maybe have a little damage on that right front with the contact with New Garden. Tony Kanan is in, Marty. Well, here's the guys uh, starting with the three-stop strategy. We saw Marco Bielder a moment ago, Tony Kanan on pit road now. These guys had major brake problems today. They rebuilt the entire brake system. Tony said, don't touch the chassis, it's fine, and the brake's way better right now, so they're going to try and make it on three stops. Red, reds go on for Kanan. And Kanan has been running the green Geico sponsored car. The primary sponsor this week is Mauser Electronics, and so it is a two-tone blue car. 
Hey guys, quick update on Dario Franchitti. His team is working his fuel strategy, so he is already in fuel save mode to, to, uh, to match his number, make sure he's on strategy. So uh, I don't think he's too worried about losing that spot. Never want to lose it, but uh, nonetheless, he's driving to a fuel number. Canon and Marco Andretti are now together on the racetrack. Showing you the difference between cold and hot tires. He should be able to get him here on the approach to turn to home with seat. Canon now is starting to develop a little bit of pressure, a little bit of heat. And there's third place, Sato, as you said, Bob, on the blacks. Gets it done. Wow. Driving for Bobby Ray Hall this year with Ray Hall's return to the Eyes on IndyCar Series as an owner. And his driver has been impressive in all three races. The finishes don't reflect that, though. Sato driving the MyJack car. Here it is, entering turn one. He's to the inside of Dario. And Dario fairly consistently, except for the start, has not taken a defensive line into turn number one. And, you know, sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. I think he knows that he's got some trouble. Kevin. Takuma Sato has not had results so far this season. He's the only driver with DNFs in both starts. Tom Anderson, their managing director, said the focus right now is just on reliability, not beating ourselves. They said it was their mistake to let the mechanical at St. Pete, but Takuma's been optimistic because despite these issues, they have had good pace in the first two races and pretty good pace again this weekend. They got bogged down in a little bit of traffic yesterday in qualifying. And now Dario's under fire from his teammate, oh. Scott Dixon, and Dixon makes the pass. <laughs> Hello there, teammate. <laughs> I'll move you over a little bit to the right as I go by. Wow. Hey, guys, I know, uh, yeah, I've been, been here and here down at the Ganassi Pits for Dario. They've been talking fuel number, but man, he's kind of dropping pretty quickly. I'd be turning up the wick, I guess, but Chip gave me that look when I asked him about handling. He said, no, car's fine. He just gave me that look like, you know, kid, we've been here before. We know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Dario's back to fifth now. And right behind him is Charlie Kimball, another guy who's doing well, as we talked earlier. Justin Wilson, meanwhile, has pulled out to a four and a half second lead over Pagano. We got the four Ganassi cars right together on the racetrack. Namely, Dixon, Franchini, Kimball, and Ray Hall. They're running fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Mitch Davis on the radio to Charlie Kimball, and that's the kind of cheerling you want to do, Wally, is you're saying, look, guy ahead of you is having trouble. Let's capitalize. Let's go, go, go. I drove for Mitch. Mitch is as patient, patient as a driver is. <laughs> I mean, he's one of those guys, he doesn't care what it is in front of you. He wants you to pass him. <laughs> that's okay, too. Mike Conway in the ABC sponsored car. There is Ryan Briscoe, who really hasn't moved up that much. He's currently 10th. He started 11th. Briscoe in number two on board with him. Hey, Bob, yeah, I'm standing down here with uh, Dale Coyne. Dale, hey, Dale, last week, uh, two weeks ago at Barber, man, you guys had a handful. Wasn't a great run for you guys. It sure seems like things are looking good now. Yeah, we went there with a sprint car, as loose as can be, and we've got it figured out a little better here, obviously. And Justin's doing a great job. He snapped that lead away right away, and, and now he's pulling away a little bit. So how, how much fuel are you burning here? As little as we can, and see how it goes. So. All right, well, Justin's uh, getting after it. He's uh, making good time. Things are looking good. Well, of course, Justin Wilson won for Dale Coyne to Watkins Glen in 2009. And he this year. won, yes, Bob. And, of course, with his engineer, Bill Pappas, yep. who had left to go to KB Racing, now is back, reunited with Justin. So they've, they're bringing the band back together. And he is looking good. 4.3 second advantage for Justin Wilson over Simon Pagano, Sato, Dixon, and Franchitti at the 38th annual Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach.
Some are moving up, some are falling back, Jan. And of course, that's Dario Franchitti on the restart. First, the original start when it looked like he might be falling back. Then you've got Simon Pagno makes it up the inside of turn number one. Almost carbon copy here for Sato. Plenty of room between cars until his teammate comes along and says, uh, hello there, Dario. See Moves him to the right, and certainly Dario is struggling to maintain the pace, and no one has maintained the pace of this man, Justin Wilson. Upping his advantage to 6.6, 6.9 seconds over Pagano. Charlie Kimball, just as we went to break. Let's see what happened to him. Under attack from Graham Rahal, who moves to the inside and passes his teammate. Well, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he almost did. Oh, look, Kimball, Kimball got uh, Newgarden and Frankini didn't do that earlier in the race. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got oh, Bourdais. Sebastian Bourdais, who had moved up five positions since the start of the race, is in the tires. Sorry, I lost it. There you hear it. Yeah. He lost it. There's your answer. Sebastian Bourdais, a four time champion in the Champ Car yeah, Series. How bad's the damage to the front? Now. This could be the first opportunity for the pits being open. Yep. yep. So the pits are open and full pit course caution. Pit there you go. <laughs> Just to, to be sure that he was perfectly clear. <laughs> Bring it down, put it right on the mark. Here we are, here we are. Three, two, one. Hey guys, Justin Wilson mark. pulls in here. I'm seeing the pit wall watching him. Blacks go on. They got a great handling car, one of the best uh, best runs for him in a long time. He's finished second twice here before. Now Townsend, of course, what happens here is that you have spacing between cars. That's why Bo Barfield has chosen to do this. They're not packed up first and then pit. They're coming in spread out. It's so much safer. But what an advantage for Wilson. Oh, and he hits the tire. That's going to be a penalty. Yep. Go, go, go. Scott Dixon pits from the fourth position. Slick black tires on for Scott Dixon. They never said a word about saving fuel that entire run. Also, Mike Conway, the winner here last year, is in. They're going to send him out. They're having some trouble getting out of pit road. A long stop for them. Slick blacks for Conway. Kevin? Will Power just came in and made a stop. He has only picked up one spot in the pits so far. That might have taken a little bit longer than what they wanted. We'll check on that. Meanwhile, they continue to get the car of Sebastian Bourdais out of the tires. Now, for Simon Pagno, where you saw that contact with the wheel, I said that'll be a penalty unless someone put a tire out where it shouldn't be. So if the tire is inside the box. He turned? Yeah. He actually yeah. turned to the right, yeah. so I'm sure somebody, somebody is was coming over up. to his left. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to make room for traffic, but that tire was where it was supposed to be. Now here is the Bourdais. Oh, oh, rear brake. Yeah, he had yeah. a lot of rear brake in it. Yeah. And it got sideways when he jumped on the brake, yeah. and boy, just not enough room to yeah. save yourself in that corner. I don't know if there's a whole lot of damage still on the front of that car, but it... Sebastian Bourdais had a ninth place finish at Barber. Not going to be quite that good today here at Long Beach. More when we return. Slubs, but you will leave with swagger. Exhibit A. Khakis to work. Just as they're getting lined up for the restart, the first seven cars, namely Sato, Franchini, Hunter Ray, Briscoe, Hinchcliffe, Castor Nevis, and Hildebrand did not pit. So they're up front. Justin Wilson, who was leading, is in eighth position. Two by two, they come off of corner number wow. 11. Well, Here well, we something's go. wrong with uh, Franchini. He had a terrible start. Mario just gets left in the dust. Takuma Sato. They're going to run him over. Ryan Hunter Ray moves to second. Split underneath Greg Keaty. I don't know what fuel setting that was on Dario's car, but it certainly wasn't the right one. It, uh, it's looking awfully soft down the front straight. Yeah, well, that really both start. The start oh, and this restart, uh, Frankie, has not been very strong. 
the Barracuda Network car from Brian Herter Racing, driven by Alex Tagliani, is wounded. And he's into the runoff area, so we won't have a caution. Whoa, what the heck? Oh, that's not good. That's Marco. He went in hard. And this will bring out a full course caution. Absolutely. Wow. And that was. Look like so, you know, there's a hit bunch hit. of cars yeah. bouncing around back there when they came out of that corner. I wonder if there's something laying on the track. Cam Ray Hall. Got no rear weight. Then come in here. Come in the back door. Catherine Leg. Yep. Well, let's bring it in. Bring it in here. But they're scattered all over. I mean, different parts of the track. Yeah. yeah. Now there was definitely. Well, we'll go back and see. But the way that uh, Marco, I mean, there was some kind of contact. It just sent him just flying. J.R. Hildebrand makes a pit stop. Meanwhile, he this did is not. a good pit, idea. Yeah, on the most recent caution, but he does now. Hildebrand is away. Marco climbs out of the car. He is okay, but he has a damaged race car. Hold on here. Just hold on. Graham Rahal gets some work at the front and the back of his car. All right, I'm just trying. Kevin. All right. Looks like it might be the end of the day for Graham Rahal. It's more than just the rear wing assembly, which they can change, but Graham is climbing out, so significant damage for that car after he apparently got catapulted by Marco Andretti. crash guys I'd like to actually see that in slow-mo just because when Marco popped out at the last second Graham gave a little dodge and I think that might have caught Marco off guard there and then Catherine leg is also in the tires they've uh, gotten her car out in fact I believe that Sebastian Bourdais marks her teammate right next to let's see what Townsend's saying uh, I see what Townsend's talking about. So as soon, you know, Graham was on his braking zone. He was kind of got a, an eye out the peripheral. As soon as Marco popped, you saw Graham just give a little bit of a, a slight, you know, steering modification. I don't think he had any idea at the closing speed that Marco was coming. Marco certainly didn't expect that. Good eyes. Dixon did a good job getting through that, too. Which what a change of fortune for Dixon because normally if Dixon's anywhere near something like this yes. in the early part of the season, he's he's right in the middle of it. And now here is Barrichello's on board. Conway Conway right in front Conway. of him, and he oh. just gives him a little boot. And I think there's left yeah. da uh, wing damage on the left front. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of things happening here on lap 24 and 25. Catherine Legg won an Atlantics race here at uh, Long Beach in 2005. Rejoining the IndyCar series this year. Competitor in Champ Car. Graham Rahal is out and uh, out of the car and out of the race. Car will go back to the wall and be repaired for the next race, which will be two weeks from today in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Mike Conway has stopped on the back stretch. Got about six or seven cars oh. involved in something here All in the last sudden, five minutes. Yeah. They got defending champ. The 
line of traffic snakes through the area where Mike Conway's car is stopped. And we also see that um, Sebastian Bourdais is back on the racetrack. We'll take a break during this full course caution here at Long Beach, California. up the road in Los Angeles for the Canucks and the Kings game three. The Stanley Cup playoffs on the NBC Sports Network. There you see the Queen Mary in the background pointed out during our qualifying show. Of course it was 100 years ago last night in the North Atlantic when the Titanic sunk. That is the famous Queen Mary harbored here in Long Beach. We're with Graham Rahal. Let's talk to him. Graham, that was a scary incident. Take us through your perspective on that with Marco jumping over the top of you. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know what to say, really. It's it's a cluster back there. I mean, we were just trying to stay clean, and I was looking. I mean, by that time, he had already hit me. So that's the problem is when you see the car dart to the right, it's when he hit my right rear. And when it slows the tire, it pulls it like that. I was just trying to stay underneath Dixon, and, uh, you know, obviously I surprised Marco, and I think the brake zone, he wasn't going to make the corner no matter what. If he had slipped underneath me, he was going to shoot long, how deep we were, because I was already braking. But uh, it's just frustrating, I think, for everybody, because the service central car actually felt really good. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. I told you this morning that we're going to have a long day, but the car felt really strong, and uh, I was just, you know, trying to do laps. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out the rest of the day, though. All right, he's still got some teammates to watch. That's Graham Ray Hall. Townsend. Hey, I'm, I'm down here with Alex Tagliani. Alex, man, it's been a tough start to a season. Certainly not the way you guys wanted to end. What happened out there? Well, uh, at the start, um, you know, like we have uh, some sort of a rev limiter when the engine uh, is not able to uh, get up to temperature, and I was trying everything I had to uh, warm it up, and um, so it was better to come through the pits and warming up because, um, you know, we're limited at 6,000 RPM, so that was not good. And then, I mean, we were making grounds. Um, you what know, happened with the contact? Well, new rule, you know, as soon as it goes green, um, you can pass. And obviously, being in the back like that, as soon as it got green, you know, like I just jump on the inside and pass Viso inside the air pin and coming onto the front straight away, he just pushed me into the wall. I guess he was upset, but he's the type of guy that gets disconnected sometimes. So it's unfortunate for the Bars and Wilkins uh, Barracuda team. Tough day for these guys, Marty. Townsend, our defending winner here at Long Beach, will not win the race this year. They had a gear problem and actually would not go into fourth gear for Mike Conway. Then they told him on the backstretch, recycle it, and then it died. So they had to get a pushback here. They literally are changing the gear on pit road. He'll make his way back out eventually, but they have taken the old gear out. The new one has gone in for Mike Conway, but losing some valuable time here on pit road. And guys, we're going to get pit stopped soon. This is going to be a, a crazy race. Strategies all over the map right now. can say that again. Takuma Sato, by the way, is the leader of the race. There he is behind the pace car in the blue and white car. And behind him is Ryan Hunter Ray, who's running second. The third car there is Ed Carpenter in the Fuzzies Vodka uh, sponsored car. However, he is not on the lead lap. He is, in fact, in 18th position. There are 20, uh, 17 cars on the lead lap. Access to get Marco's take on that, because I think it's going to be quite different than Graham Ray Hall's. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. There is Fran Keaty, who is currently running in fourth. And this was when Dario just didn't launch. I mean, it was. And that's twice now today, at least twice. His car, now I don't know what happened there, but just on the start and the restarts, the car is not going. Brakes are working fine, just yep. he just couldn't get off the line. I mean, he took everything back he could from Hinchcliffe, but when they said go, go, I mean, that just didn't go. We have another two abreast restart coming up. Uh -oh. And now, man, Franchitti is stalled. Dixon. It's Dixon. Is it? Yeah. No, it is Dixon. Yep. Uh, huh. We were just saying that Dixon, how fortunate he was. He was so close to that accident that happened between the fact it's the same corner, same approach to where he just dodged a huge bullet. Now, he obviously hasn't dodged it. Huh. 
we were going green, but we're not now because of Dixon. Oh, and Sato takes the opportunity to yep. now. Did he get into the pits? And did they close the pits? Because this is uh, a very nice time to stop. But because they're packed up, he's going to lose huge track position. I'm, I'm not so sure that was when you wanted to, Kevin. Sato takes the opportunity to come in. Good, quick stop. He goes to sticker red, softer, alternate tires. And he will give up the lead position, but comes in when the pace is at caution. Yes, but it's track position, Kevin. That's the thing that kills you. You know, if, if he could have stayed out, because he theoretically could have run about, well, five, six more laps of green, and then at least you build a little gap. You don't lose so many positions here. He just files right in at the back now. That's a killer. Only about four cars or three cars are going to be behind him. Well, Takuma led this race for eight circuits, and he has now led two of the three races so far this year. He led 11 laps at the opener in St. Pete. Hey guys, just an update on Dario. I finally went back to Chip. Said, Chip, there's no way this is fuel save mode. What's going on in these restarts? And under further uh, inquisition, <laughs> clearly, uh, Dario's apparently been claiming, uh, complaining a little bit about horsepower all weekend, and uh, uh, of course he's really complaining about it now. So there's more to uh, the story there. Any any word on uh, Dixon down there, Council? I, I was focused on Dario, but uh, you know Chip's just shaking his head right now. I think he might give me the smackdown if I get up there again. <laughs> wow. In the meantime, Kevin is with Marco. And his dad, Michael Andretti, and the boss just uh, came in here as well. We'll sneak in. First of all, I see you got your hand all wrapped up. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm sore. It's just, uh, you know, I feel for the guys. We put so much work in um, to the RC, you know, the RC car, and uh, that was our stint to make hay, and, and we were trying to do so. And, uh, you know, there's one thing blocking, but there's another thing chopping. That was a chop. Um, I'm lucky I didn't get upside down. I could have been killed. So he should have been penalized on this, in your view? Well, I mean, man, I took a big hit. I took the bigger penalty. Um, you know, I, I would have had a clean pass on him. It is what it is. Okay, thank you. That's Marco Andretti. The major thing is he's okay. Ryan Hunter Ray assumed the lead. Now he is in pit lane, and Ryan Briscoe has taken the lead here at okay. Long Beach. Well, this now makes Sato's stop look pretty good. Kevin? Ryan Hunter Ray comes in as well. And James Hinchcliffe also is going to take the opportunity to pit. Routine stop, no problem for Hunter Ray. He won here a couple of years ago. He's always been quick. This is the guy that Will Power said is the guy to beat this weekend, Marty. Kevin James Hinchcliffe, his teammate, so the understeer is brutal. Can't pass out there. They put on scuffed red tires. He's have six laps on him for James Hinchcliffe. So, as you mentioned earlier, trying to avoid having to come in under green, but they will pay the penalty yeah. with track position here. And it's a big penalty. I think all three of them. Uh, that just, the timing just wasn't good. They needed to get back to green to build a little gap before it happened, and they couldn't do it. Well, there's Scott Dixon's car as we get set to go back to green flag racing. Ryan Briscoe is the leader. Frankini is second, then Castro Nevis, Wilson, and Pat Pagano. Call Star Star Indy for live in-car cameras, driver pit crew chatter, and more. Download IndyCar Mobile only from Verizon. And they line up two by two. Elio, or rather, uh, Elio was uh, doing a little brake checking there, it looked like. Come out again on lap 30 of 85. Now pair keep, up, let's pair up, please. Keep in mind for Briscoe that he has not stopped. So when you see Sato, when you see Ryan Hunter Ray, these guys peel onto pit road. Obviously, Briscoe has got some great fuel economy. He's going to try to do what I think is the way to go. Build a little gap. Do something before you pit. Get ready for good restart. He's going to pit pretty quick, isn't he on? Yeah, he's going to have to do a lap or two Here before he's going to have to hit pit road. Ready? Get ready. ready. Here we go. Get Again, ready. the starter. Wow, Dario. Dario. Green comes Jeffrey. out. Still can't do I'm it. Get the restart. Look at Wilson again. Wilson had a great run on him, but he kind of got blocked by yeah. Franchini. He's going to lose three or four spots, maybe more. Ooh, this is oh, no. Go. Now there's contact between Briscoe and Dario. Franchini with a wounded nose. Keep digging. Keep digging. And while 
point, looking closer at the data, I think that Briscoe could actually go another five to six laps if he was really good on his yellow fuel mileage. Yeah. So he has, now, is his car damaged though? I mean, that was a pretty good size hit. I think Frank Keaty got the worst of it. Yeah. Looks like he did a lot of damage that end plate on the left side wow. of the wing. Sato, Sato just takes passed over. power. Yep. Woohoo! <laughs> Here comes Hunter Ray, Hunter Ray. Hunter Ray. Wow, that was close. <laughs> Trying to go around the outside of Rubens. Nice. Go on one more if you can. James Hinchcliffe trying to get around Simona. Oh, and he <laughs> <A> little nudge. <laughs> gets, gets her sideways. Get wow, look at the difference yeah. there. That, oh, that's, that's all not, horsepower that's not right a, there. That's not a fair fight. <laughs> oh, that hurts when you're a driver. Yeah. Dario's took a, taking a look at, oh, man, Sato is really moving. As Dario does have right front wing damage, he is going to try to make one more lap and try to come in, so clearly uh, the handling's gone south on him, too. James, Jakes, and Power. Power. Yeah. That's ninth and tenth. The leader is Briscoe, then Helio. Tony Kanaan moves to fifth position ahead of Wilson. He's on a totally different pit strategy, so that's why they're a bit shuffled there. Remember, that was very early on that Kanaan pit, so he pitted so early, he's going to be a three stopper no matter what happens. Wally, you talked about, you guys just talked about the Lotus going down the straightaway. Uh, Robbie Buell said they were seven miles an hour slower than the Honda and the GM at the end of the straightaway. Wow. Yeah, you can't make that up under breaking. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, contact between Briscoe and Franchitti. Something like just yeah, hit something the tire flew off. On, uh, yeah, I think definitely Franchitti's going to have to get that wing fixed. Could very easily have flattened Briscoe's tire yeah, too. Does. Yep. Well, it would have, but now they have the rear wheel guard, so you can't yeah. make direct contact. So we have seen not as many rear cut tires when you start touching, because you don't touch the tire any longer. You hit that wheel guard. The other thing, uh, Jan, is those front end fences have a really rounded kind of blunt edge now. They're not as sharp as they used to be, which uh, definitely has cut down on cut tires. Uh, as you know, right there, right behind Fred Keaty. They've made this move before, turn one. That was where Pagano we saw has already made a move on Frank Keating. Down to Marty. Well, Bob, I was finally able to talk to Mike Hall and try and figure out what's going on with Scott Dixon's cars. They cannot figure it out. You see all the engineers behind the pit box here trying to figure out what exactly is going on with Scott Dixon. They asked for his car to be brought to pit road, but they put him behind the safety wall in turn eight. The communication didn't get there, so they're losing valuable time. And this for a guy battling for the championship who told me is all about just being consistent. This will really hurt them, Bob. Scott Dixon out of the race, and he had gotten off to a great start in this year of eyes on IndyCar racing. Second in both races Boy, so far. wants that spot oh, really, does. really bad. And we're getting close to, if someone has not stopped yet, we're within a lap or two. Ryan Briscoe, of course, would be in that group. Castro Nevis is in that group, and so is Frank Keating. Time as a leader right now. Let's see if Ryan comes in this time. So what this does, of course, the cars are spread out. So yes, you're still going to lose hey, 30, 30 seconds roughly, but you're not going to go all the way to the back. So yes, Dario Frank Keeney does. Wilson's cars and awfully Cash good on So lines. all three, all three that we mentioned, they were all ones who have not pitted. We'll get a new news on the car. Yeah, guys, they're going to replace the front wing. I did see them take the replacement wing, take two for turns of front wing out. So he's a little bit too neutral, I think, even with the good front wing. New front wing is going on. He's got the blacks. And kept. 
Buff Reds for Ryan Briscoe. He comes in of this group that came on pit road. He was the first out. So Briscoe was told by Roger Penske, you're going to go back out. You're going to have some clean track, and we can make some good lap times right now. And Kevin, his teammate Elio Castroneves actually beat him off pit road. It was sticker, sticker, red tires for Elio. They asked him, do you want anything changed with the car? He said, no, red sticker tires is all I want. The car is just about perfect. And that answers the question that they did not build near the gap. The field is all so close that they all streamed by during that stop. So, in fact, when you look at what Sato, Ryan Hunter Ray, and those guys did, it actually did work in their advantage. They didn't lose the same amount of track. Right. It yep. only works maybe if you get 20, like Justin Wilson, when he had that huge lead before, he might have been able to pull it off, but they were still too close together. Simon Pagano is the leader of the race by about three tenths of a second over Tony Kanaan. Wilson is third. Takuma Sato back up to fourth, and James Jakes is running in the fifth position. We've completed 35 of 85 laps here on the NBC Sports Network. If you were a race car driver, you get to say, I'm a race car driver. When people ask you what you do, I wanted to win this race so bad, you'd be a man amongst men. You'd command a rocket ship through nerve grinding courses, the world waiting for you beyond the checkered flag. And fans everywhere would follow you and your sport on IndyCar Mobile. Live in car cameras, streaming race control, and driver pit crew transmission to let you live the high octane dream. Download IndyCar Mobile now, only from Verizon. Honda Odyssey. Honda, proud partner of the IZOD IndyCar Series. IndyCar Nation, champion members get special benefits. And champions get special access. A whole different race when you're a champion. Who gets track rides with IndyCar drivers? An IndyCar Nation champion, that's who. Go to IndyCar.com and click on the link for IndyCar Nation. Just $34.95 for the year gets you inside the action with special driver access, passes, exclusive IndyCar Nation events, special travel packages, and more. Join the nation. When you're a champion, you do get to meet me. Coming up next, the Panthers look to even the series against the Devils and Hall of Famer Martin Brodeur. Then, will the Canucks prevent the Kings from taking a shocking three-game lead? Coverage begins at 6.30 on the NBC Sports Network. Every game, every night, because it's the Cup. Welcome back to NBC Sports Network live coverage of the 38th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. 38 of 85 laps completed. Simon Pagano is the leader of the race. He led three races in 2007 when he ran a full season in Champ Car. So this is the first race he has led since Zolder, jo Zolder Belgium in 2007. E.J. Viso is getting a drive through penalty because of unavoidable contact with Alex Tagliani. And we heard Alex's take on that earlier. Right now. Let's go. So Viso serves the penalty, does a drive goes back out onto the racetrack. He was down, running so in 12th uh, position. All right, you're clear. You're clear. Here comes Elio, Briscoe, and Leg. And, of course, those positions reversed because Elio was able to have a quicker stop than Briscoe. Viso with avoidable contact on uh, Tagliani. Yeah, I think you said unavoidable. Did I? Yeah, yeah. but... That makes a little more sense. It <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> does make more sense. <laughs> yeah. Marty. Well, Bob, DJ was not very happy about that. Let's talk to Jimmy Vassar and get his take on it. He keeps telling Jimmy, DJ on the radio plenty of time. That a fair call? I didn't see it. Uh, so uh, EJ doesn't seem to think it was. He thinks Tag passed three cars under yellow and put himself in that position. But, you know, we just got to keep digging and. Uh, I, we'll see you some other time, I guess. And the team also brought up, was there a statute of limitations? They felt like that was a, a long time ago in the race. Is it fair to call the penalty now? 
Uh, well, I mean, I think if it's the penalty is a real penalty, yeah, I think it doesn't matter how long it takes. You, Jan, I mean. No, I mean, their goal is They're, to they're make, pretty busy up in race control sometimes. And so. they've been very quick. I mean, sometimes yeah. it just take. My guess is that they had to dig for video evidence of that one right. because that wasn't one that we got to see. So they managed to find a way to review it, and it probably wasn't something they had instantaneous. Second, third, and fourth here. be Tony Kanaan because Tony Kanaan is well, going to have strategy is Pashno. He's the guy leading right now. So Tony Kanaan. Uh oh, there we got somebody slowing. Oh, wow, that was close. <laughs> and that's in fact Tagliani who's back, back out. In the race, yeah. He'd be looking for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Sato is driving a great race up to fourth in the My Jack car. Will Power still battling with James Jakes. Yeah, Jakes is doing a great job. That's the other Dale Coyne car. Yeah. His teammate, of course, is Justin Wilson, who is third. And Jakes is on black tires. Yes. Yeah. How about that? Go James. Carrying the Boy Scouts of America colors. Guys, I talked to James this morning. I really didn't know him very well. He was a rookie last year, but spent a lot of time this morning talking with him. He really feels like his program's coming together. His engineer, John Dick, they're working really well with uh, with Justin. Yeah, obviously, I got a fast day to look at around here, so he's got a big smile like this was uh, maybe a breakthrough weekend. Looking good. At almost the halfway point, and here comes Will to the inside, and will take the position. That moves power up to fifth spot. And that was the gradual creep. What did uh, Townsend, what did he call that? He called that the... Uh, Hornish, wasn't yeah, it? The Hornish yeah, the Sam Hornish creep. Sam, the yeah. Sam Hornish creep, yeah. I guess. I know, uh, that was more of a European creep. That was more like a Schumacher fade. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you are uh, a little better fuel shape than we are, so start a little different strategy. If you don't burn the fuel, if you have to keep it behind you. Elio trying to look to the inside of Sato, or rather of uh, Biso. Guys, up last night I was doing some uh, in-depth research on Jimmy Vassar's yacht, and we spent a lot of time talking about EJ Vizo. And I got to tell you, he's he's really coached EJ so well to calm down, chill out, stay on strategy. You know, we had a bit of a hiccup here with EJ uh, in the avoidable contact, but Jimmy Vassar has made a massive change in EJ. Well, Townsend, Tony Kanaan running up front. Nice to see hits from running second. Remember, they pitted lap 11, so a little off sequence with everybody else. So once again, put on scuff reds for TK. They had the big brake problems this morning. No brake problems so far in this race. He told me, I'm last in the championship. I was frustrated as I've ever been. Had a little trouble getting out of pit road, but finally does. Kanaan moves back on the racetrack. And Marty, the only problem is for Tony Kanaan, because of all that caution, all those other people who stopped early now kind of vaulted into two stops. So unfortunately, that's putting him back in the order, and he still has to stop because of that one more time than everyone else he's racing with. That moves Kanaan back to 15th spot. Now, Townsend, when you get invited to things like you did last night, don't forget about your bra casting partners and if we don't get a an invite to the same thing you do at least bring us some shrimp or lobster or whatever if you could if you could only appreciate the guilt that I was feeling I mean, it was a last <laughs> oh, yeah. second thing and I, I looked at myself on it that I don't have Jan's number Bob's number <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll get you next time <laughs> Pagano leads Wilson here at Long Beach California stay with us back in a moment There's the leader of the race, Simon Pagano, with a two and a half second advantage on Justin Wilson. But Wilson has cut the lead in half the last lap. Yeah, it looks like Wilson's making some time right now. 
And the thing for Simon is that he needs to run hard, but he has to save fuel because remember, they took advantage of some yellow, and now he needs to be cautious. Kevin? And that is the, the right way to look at it for Simon Pagino. They are going to have to save a little bit of fuel to get it done on one more stop, and that's a little bit iffy. He came into this race feeling like this was going to be his best chance to win because he's been here before in an Indy car and also in the American Le Mans series. Townsend? Yeah, Kevin, uh, Justin Wilson running second. He started third. He's finished second here twice before. They're on the same strategy as Pagano. Big smiles all around at Dale Coyne Racing, Kevin. Bobby Rahal doesn't think those in front of Takuma Sato, who is running in third, are going to be able to get it done on one more stop. He's been telling Takuma, just be smart. Those in front of you need two stops. We just need one. You're doing a great job. Beautiful drive so far. We fall back to Will Power. Good drive for him so far. Starting back in the 12th position, he has worked his way up to fourth. They're trying to get to lap 57, so he's on the same strategy as Pagano, but Tim Sidrick thinks that they might be able to get this done in one more stop. Townsend? Yeah, so James Jake's having the best run of his IndyCar career. He's uh, doing an incredible job. Same strategy as Justin. He's right there. His lap times are competitive. And uh, we're going back on to, uh, where's Charlie? Kimball's mine. I'm sorry. So, Charlie, Charlie Kimball, this is a guy that's really been in the shadows, I think. He had a rookie season. You know, a big campaign about uh, his diabetic situation and all of that. But look, at this, this is a guy that's having a great run today. He really needs this. He's stepping out. Really good drive for Rubens Barrichello. That we see him in that blue car coming around. He's uh, worked his way up into the seventh position. He said every five laps of a race weekend, he feels significantly better. His biggest challenge right now is just learning these circuits. He's the only one that's never been here. Marty? Kevin, the strategy is all over the map. J.R. Hildebrand will have to pit in about seven laps. Not five laps ago, he was in third. Now you see he's back in eighth, struggling to hang on to the car right now. They had a bad problem with it bottoming out earlier in the weekend. They have fixed that, but not much better chassis-wise. Kevin? Ryan hunter Ray's probably got about 10 laps before he has to pit. He came in on lap 29. They've been telling him, you're good on fuel, though, so far. Same for his teammate, James Hinchcliffe, right behind him. He said the car has a tremendous amount of understeer in it, trying to catch his teammate, but they have made their way through the field on these red tires, trying to put reds on next time as well. Townsend. Simona Di Silvestro, uh, best run in Lotus right now. She's uh, having a good run. Her be start started 17th. Her best finish here is 17th. Well, we have a crash. Got, uh, it's Mike Conway, the defending champion of the race. I'm not sure it's a crash or something broke. Well, there's it's a lot like of uh, on fire. Hey guys, he just said on the radio, just shut off. That's twice this has happened to them today. So uh, a recurring problem. Again, they did change the gear last time. You see the smoke coming out from the back. So clearly a fire as well for Mike Conway. Here's Simona De Silvestro coming out of pit lane. Still she was bad. running in 12th position. Green, green, green. It's still green. We're, we're expecting one. So we've seen problems from Scott Dixon's Honda and now Mike Conway's Honda. Now if they're if they were to go caution this is not a time you want to pit because you can't make it to the end if you stop now so don't do it. <laughs> well and here he comes. Simon Pagano. Well, that's your answer. I, I don't see that there's any way you can get home from here unless you've got major Five, yellow. Four, three, two, Kevin. Rubens Barrichello had tires out. We're thinking now they're not going to go, but Pagano will pit from the lead. Pagano will wait to get as much fuel as he can, but that's going to be awfully difficult to go the rest of the way. They're going to need a lot of yellow to make this happen. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, you would only make that decision if you knew that you were in trouble. In other words, we thought he might be one of them that could make it with one more stop. Maybe they're using a lot more fuel. Going to give the lead back to Takuma Sato. And Sato has a little bit more in hand. We heard from that report that Bobby Rahal thought that they could do it. The ones in front could not. Remember, that's because Sato stopped a little bit later. And he should be fine. Well, I mean, it's a bit of a struggle, but he's definitely got a shot. Just put another lap on Ed Carpenter, who's running in 17th spot. And that's Justin Wilson behind Ed. Red and white Sonny's car for Justin Wilson. James Jakes just peeled off onto pit road.
And that's, I believe that uh, Townsend said he was on the same strategy as Wilson, so that makes you wonder, because Wilson needs to go. Here comes Power. Yeah, look yeah. who's making noise here in third, and now he goes to second spot. Will Power take second? He takes his away. He's got reds on and uh, took the blacks off. Looking for top five. There's James Jakes moving back onto the racetrack after a pit stop. Now, Will Powell will try to pass Ed Carpenter here. And will do so easily. Now, Justin Wilson will also pass Ed. How about Charlie Kimball hanging in there in fourth spot? Good race for him. Kimball stopped at the same time as Wilson, so they're going to be on a very similar quest. Good Carpenter. Good job. Good job. Clear by a lot. Will Power is charging to the front as he always does. He's moved up to second spot, just about a second and a half behind the leader, Takuma Sato. First licensed IndyCar driver with diabetes to finish the Indy 500. I live in the fast lane. I need on the go insulin delivery. That's why I use Novolog Flex Pen. Flex Pen is pre filled with my fast acting insulin. I dial my exact dose, inject by pressing a button. Flex Pen is insulin delivery my way. Novolog is a fast acting insulin used to control high blood sugar in adults and children with diabetes. Do not inject if you do not plan to eat within 5 to 10 minutes after injection to avoid low blood sugar. Tell your health care provider about all medicines you take and all of your medical conditions, including if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. The most common side effect is low blood sugar. Other possible side effects include reactions at the injection site. Get medical help right away if you experience serious allergic reactions, body rash, trouble with breathing, fast heartbeat, or sweating. FlexPen is there when I need it, just like my pit crew. Ask your doctor about Novolog FlexPen, covered by 90% of insurance plans, including Medicare. Find your copay at myflexpen.com. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, visit smokefree.gov. If you were a race car driver, you get to say, I'm a race car driver. When people ask you what to do, I wanted to win this race so bad, you'd be a man amongst men. You'd command a rocket ship through nerve grinding courses, world waiting for you beyond the checkered flag. And fans everywhere would follow you and your sport on IndyCar Mobile. Live in car cameras, streaming race control, and driver pit crew transmission to let you live the high octane dream. Download IndyCar Mobile now, only from Verizon. Back at Long Beach, you see Elio Castroneves battling with EJ Viso. A moment ago, our championship leader, Elio Castroneves, called to his pits that I need a new front wing. The team has brought a new front wing out. They think there's some right front damage on the wing. That would be both of our championship leaders if he does have to Oh, pit. hang on. Boys. Oh, and he's going to need more than a front wing. Whoa. How did they all get through there, Marty? Sorry, that was wild. Be patient, be patient. He does have damage to his right front wing, Marty, uh, Elio. He may have just gotten that, though. <laughs> Justin Wilson just made a pit stop here. Wilson he comes just, back. Yeah. Wilson just threw on scuff reds, yeah. happy with the balance. We're side by side here. But Townsend, that's too early for Wilson. So Bobby Rahal was correct that he thought the cars ahead of Sato weren't going to make it. And unless there's a heap of yellow, Wilson is not going to make it to the end. They packed that thing full of fuel. How many laps of yellow do you think they need? A lot. Maybe 10. Watch this, guys. Ed See, Visa, yeah, Visa right goes here. to Carpenter. Elio goes to the right. Power's already underneath Elio. They Brisco. do make contact. Or yeah. Briscoe, yeah. Briscoe really and, had to take evasive action. Yeah. And how did Briscoe not just, that was some great driving. Oh, this will be unbelievable. See how quick is like, oh, Elio. Wow. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
And to set that up a little bit, guys, Elio was getting very frustrated with EJV, so you can see Ryan Briscoe being a little frustrated with EJV so as well. And once he made that pass, Looks good on TV. he looks said, good check on TV. my right looks rear, and you hear John Erickson telling him on the radio, they checked his right rear, and they said it looks good on TV. So I guess they can thank us for showing him the right rear, that it's all fine. This is 13th and 14th. Charlie Kimball has come in for a stop and, in fact, is on his way out. Well, this is closer. This still means you've got to idle around and save fuel, but it's still, you got to go a couple more laps if you want to make it to the end. I'll tell you, Viso's car gets off the corner as well. That's why these pesky cars can't get around him because he just squirts off the corners. Firestone telemetry from Ryan Briscoe. Make it up. Briscoe makes it up under braking. Really nowhere to pass it here. See right there? I mean, that, that car does and, accelerate. And this is the first opportunity that I think for Will Power, I think that this is the, the earliest that you could get in and not have to stop again. Work completed. 31 laps remain in this race. So if he goes 31 laps, it stays green. He, I think he'd go 31, but he's not gonna be going fast 31. Back to this race now for 13th and 14th, Viso and Ryan Briscoe, who again was the fastest in qualifying yesterday, but started 11th of the Chevy penalty. And this might be a good time, Jan, to talk about exactly what happened to the Chevy that's caused all these problems and penalties. I think I've been able to shake it out. And believe it or not, I do not believe that it's mechanical. And you can say, well, what? We, we heard that the engines were blowing up, at least in the case at the Sonoma test with Hinchcliffe. Well, believe, well, you know this, the engine calibration that you have, if you go a little too lean on the fuel, or maybe you get a little aggressive with the spark, you'd get detonation. So that'd be like a ping or a knock that you'd have in a road car. You do that at 12,000 RPM, you could damage the engine, damage a piston, and then sure enough, kablamo, they blow to pieces. So what I think is not necessarily clear, they replaced 11 engines with the exact same spec engine. These are not updated fixed engines. And they said, oh no, we found a problem and we're going to be fine. They didn't have to apply to IndyCar or the other manufacturers. So to me, that means, aha, the calibration was off. They hurt something in a previous race, figured the other ones were gonna blow up. Let's put the same spec in. Now that we know what we've missed. Yep. Good explanation. <laughs> hey, Jan, off of that. How bad will it be for Honda if they don't win this race? Oh. They, I mean, they, gave, they spotted everybody 11 spots. Yeah. And if they don't win this race after getting beat the first two, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how there's an excuse for that. And Takuma Sato relinquishes the lead, Kevin. Bobby Rahal's team has not won since the last time they were a full-time Izod IndyCar Series team. That was 2008 with Ryan Hunter Ray at Watkins Glen. Ryan Hunter Ray stays out on track. Here's Sato and what should be his final stop. He still might have to save a little bit, Marty. Guys, J.R. Hildebrand on pit road lost a lot of time at the very end of that run with a car that was very, very tight. The understeer was free and they put slick red tires on and they said, pack it, fuel of fuel. We're going to have to make it work to the very end. Now, that was Sato going through and Sato is ahead of power. Okay, so that is great for Sato because Sato can make it to the end. Power might make it to the end and he has to save. So Sato. Great strategy and great stop. And a lot of fresher tires. Yes. Now, of course, he's not in the lead, obviously, because there are those ahead of him. Right. Like Pagano. But he's in a position. for Sato, that was nicely done. Yeah, the leader of the race is Ryan hunter Ray, James Hinchcliffe running second. Pagano is third, then Canon, and then we get to Sato, who just completed his pit stop. And for Pagano, remember when Pagano stopped, I when I saw it, I think no, I said, no way, you can't make it to the end. So if he runs hard now, we can watch his lap times. That'll be the indicator. If he's really running fast, they know they can't make it. If he's really backpedaling, because well, when he pitted, I was thinking, no yeah. way. Yeah. Clear track again. Clear track. Let's go. Pagano 
currently in third position. He led 14 laps of this race earlier. We have had six leaders and seven lead changes, three caution flags for a total of 12 laps. And of course, the first caution flag was brought out in turn one when Joseph Newgarden, who started second, crashed into the tire barrier. Kevin? There we see Takuma Sato getting around through some traffic. Bobby Rahal is the car owner. Are you guys in the catbird seat right now? Well, I mean, we're still, you know, got to be careful on the fuel. I mean, with yellow makes it a golden, but uh, but we have enough to make it to the end. We just got to uh, be a little conservative yet on the track, but so far so good. Ryan Hunter Ray is also coming in. All right, he's uh, obviously closely watching what Will Power is doing. And here comes Hunter Ray Go down right to make three. a stop, and he should be able to get home the rest of the way on this one. Right behind him is Hinchcliffe, who was running second, so first and second pit. Hinchcliffe into his pit box, Marty. Bob, they asked him, what changes do you want with the car? He said, get these tires off of here. There's nothing left on these reds. There's sticker reds that go on. They said, run as hard as you want. You saw his teammate Ryan hunter Ray flash through the screen, 8.2 on the stop for Hinch, and they told him, run hard. And here comes Ryan hunter Ray back in the race. And Hinchcliffe. Ryan Briscoe makes a pit stop. Team Penske driver. So I think this thing's going to shake down to Sato versus Power. Power with less fuel, Sato with more. Briscoe warming up the tires before he clears the speed limit. Who just, did, who just did a 109.6? That's the answer to that question. Go, go on fire. We got to stop again. <laughs> and you asked what you need. Want to build a gap? Oh, and here we go. That's what we just said. Power versus Sato. But power has less fuel to use. He takes the spot, though. And power goes to third. Tony Kanan is running second. He is off pit strategy. If Will Power can run that fast, trying to make 31 laps. Yeah. Sato doesn't have a, a prayer, really. Well, unless... Viso Unless power can't hits. make it, and they're Don't telling him to go. Yeah. And guys, imagine the frustration today for EJ Viso. They've had such a fast car. A little bit of trouble there on the left front, trying to get that leg on for these guys. They want to make sure he gets full of fuel. And then they told him, run as hard as you want for the rest of this race. Scuffed reds on for EJ Viso. He's had a pretty good car all day long, Bob. Yeah, he start, He uh, qualified fifth yesterday. But was one of those who uh, had the penalty imposed. And I think power, the way, of course, that's Briscoe. But the way power's on the power, <laughs> I think he may have another stop. And Viso comes out right beside the leader of the race, but he dispenses of him rather quickly. Simon Pagino over Tony Kanaan. Third is power for Sato and fifth, James Jakes. Just 25 laps to go at Long Beach. I'm going to guess probably close to a million Camrys out there that have had my hands on them. One of the first things I ask myself is, would I want this in my car? And I do ask myself that a lot. We don't take shortcuts. We want to make sure that people are proud of it. I've seen the people that put the motor in and I've watched them assemble this car. My people here in Kentucky. Toyota Camry, the most American made car on the road for the last three years is judged by cars.com.
Panther Racing and Hiring Our Heroes have teamed up to combat unemployment issues facing our National Guard and military spouses. This year, we will host hiring fairs across the country, connecting veterans and military spouses with local and national employers. It means good jobs for military families like mine. It means talented, dedicated employees for American business. It means we'll be serving our heroes as well as they've served us. We've got their back. We've got their back. Do you? There are a whole lot of reasons to hit the open road on a Can-Am Spider Roadster. And now we're giving you yet another. It's the Can-Am Test Ride event. Visit canam.brp.com to find out how you can take one for a test ride, whether you have a motorcycle license or not. And with special financing, you could own a Can-Am Roadster of your own for as little as $1.99 a month. See your local dealer for details or visit canam.brp.com. The beautiful venue of Long Beach, California, where we look forward to coming every year for the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. The race is well past the halfway point with Simon Pagino, the leader. Some big names have been involved in incidents. Absolutely. Of course, the scariest moment, Marco Andretti, Graham Rahal. Thankfully, he was okay. A very scary moment. Obviously, a big difference of opinion as to what went down there. Then in the very same spot on the racetrack, right after Scott Dixon dodged that, car loses fire and he loses significant time. And Daro Franchini, who nothing seems to have gone right today from restarts and starts, also loses wing on the back of Briscoe. Franchini is a lap down in 16th spot. Kind of unbelievable for the defending champion. Elio Castroneves comes back out of the pit area. And I think our man, Mr. Takuma Sato, has, and Bobby Rahal, have got the right plan. And I think they've given Will Power the go sign because they've realized he can't make it to the end. So yeah. you don't think that Power has enough fuel, but Sato does? That's what Jan is saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and, I, and, and I don't think Power is not going to be able to make up that much ground in order to come in right. and and try to beat Sato. Yeah. Um, and our leader, Pagino, for sure has to stop. And right, that is right. why he's just out there going as fast as he possibly can at breakneck speed so he can build a gap, get in and out. And this, of course, is all if everything stays let's green. Check his gap. His gap to Sato is 14 seconds. That's not going to do it. You're going to lose 30, well, yeah, you'll lose 30 seconds minimum on this long pit lane. Pagano, a two-time ALMS winner here at Long Beach in 2010 and last year. There is Viso, who is in 14th spot, a lap down. Here comes Power around Simona de Silvestro. Power is second, about six seconds behind. Third is Sato, who was right ahead of James Jakes. And again, we... At 15 seconds behind yes. Pagano. And but power. Jake's just doing a great job. And you know, Bob, I don't know, I'm going to watch power closely because it wouldn't make any sense if he was within a lap that they would tell him to go. See, now we see Sato in the picture. Now I'm thinking that he's throttled back because it would not make any sense to go, go, go and then have to make an additional stop if he was only really needing an extra lap. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's why I didn't get it to begin with when he, when he thought it was like, let's try to get out there and build that much of a gap. Not sure he could do it. Well, they, they pitted what, two laps within each other, yes. right? Yes, but two laps is handy. Kevin? Simon Pagano is definitely going to have to pit. Will Power, I asked Tim Sindrick if they can make it, and he said, we're going to try, but he put his two fingers together and said, it's going to be very close. He keeps telling Will Power on the radio, think about nothing else but saving fuel right now. Okay, well, there's your answer. But did it not seem like Will Power, when he passed Sato, just took off and left him? And then maybe now they've reassessed and said, whoa, hang on, buddy. That's, <laughs> that's too much fuel. But at night, I guess that's what you do. You take your track position and then slow down. most recently at Barber. Remember 
the Chevys were all penalized 10 grid positions. Here's how they're running now. Power is in second. Barrichello sixth. And down the line. Elio running 12th. Of course, Andretti is out of the race and will finish in 25th spot. And of course, Robin Miller made a great point that if for some reason, in fact, Will Power can save the kind of fuel that we thought wasn't possible at that kind of speed, and he ends up winning this thing. Honda's got to be thinking, what do we got to do? <laughs> we spotted the entire group, yep. 10 spots. There's the leader, Simon Pagano. Will have to pit before the end of the race. His advantage over Will Power is about 15 and a half seconds now. We're on lap 66. The schlubs, but you will leave with swag. Exhibit A. Khakis to work? What a schlub. Exhibit B. Man, this is style in motion, and that's a playmaker. Style is a statement, gentlemen, and a statement we will make. Could he be the next rookie winner of the Indy 500? J.R. Hildebrand down along the white line. They said 2011 was the best Indy 500 finish ever. Buttering slow, and he hits the wall. Dan Weldon has won the race. They also said that in 1982, 1989, 1992, and 2006. Witness the next chapter in the greatest spectacle in racing. For more great finishes and ticket information, go to Indy500.com. This is the reinvented police officer. He's also a masseuse. These are reinvented curtains. They are made of pizza. The reinvented DMV. It's a little nicer. Next! And this is the reinvented Camry with available streaming music, a newly refined interior, and class leading MPG from Toyota. This is the story of an amazing journey, a journey that began back in 1911, the inaugural Indianapolis 500 mile race. Ray Haroon won that year. And as he crossed the finish line that day on his Firestone tires, he surely had no idea what he was starting. A legacy of guts, grit, and determination. On big tracks and small, famous and not so famous, we raced. And we raced to win. And over the years, the cars got faster, the crowds became bigger, and our passion burned brighter. Because you see, just like old Ray would tell you, or Mario, or Al, Sam, or Elio, once you get that checkered flag fever, you can't shake it. You can only feed it. Today, that passion continues to drive us. And while looking back on our journey is a source of great pride, the road ahead looks even brighter. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Ron board with J.R. Hildebrand, who is in a good battle with uh, Justin Wilson. Wilson is fifth. Hildebrand is sixth. Now, James Jakes lost a couple of positions a uh, lap or two ago. He got off uh, course a little bit and lost some spots, but he's only back to the seventh spot. And there is Hildebrand moving to the inside of Wilson and taking that position. I think Wilson just lost a couple spots, but I think he's giving them away. I think he's probably on uh, fuel concern right now. Yeah, both these guys are uh, Wilson and Jakes. I just talked to Dale Coyne. I said, does Wilson need a yellow? He nodded, yeah, with a sigh. So they're saving it like they, uh, they need to right now, but I think they're going to need a third stop. There is Rubens Barrichello, who the lap of four passed Justin Wilson, and Barrichello has moved up to fourth position, and it's good to see the 19-year Formula One veteran doing well in the IndyCar series. I mentioned at the luncheon that I did here in Long Beach on Thursday that viewership in Brazil is up 40% in the first two races of this year, the Eyes on IndyCar series. And I said about 39.9% of that was because of Rubens Barrichello. <laughs> <laughs> and the Brazil fans had a chance to see Formula One racing earlier today, and now they're watching their hero, Rubens Barrichello, in the Eyes on IndyCar minus series. Minus three to Simona, Rubens, minus three. Rough around this place, though. Very bumpy. You can see the cars under, especially under braking. The braking zones here are really, really rough. Now, Ruben stopped one lap even before Will Power. So, you know, I'm almost, I'm starting to think here that 
it may not be an even fight. You have Chevrolet versus Honda, and I think Chevrolet, not only may they not have... Okay, and there's the Pagano pit we're expecting. Pagano takes the car into the pit area from the lead, and that's going to turn the lead over to Will Power. And I think that what I was starting to say was for Will Power, this will be quick on fuel. Had a 19 and a half second lead when he came in the pits. Yep. There, go, 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 there go, go, go. is power. There is power. And Sato goes by. Just saw the blue and white. He's... All right, so they're doing the same thing we are. They're coaching him through. Who's... Here comes Barrichello, P4. Barrichello yeah. past me. Oh, and he might get. No, Barrichello no. should be much quicker at speed. Yeah, you got to. But not bad. Gotta, that shows you why you want to build a gap before you pit. What I was kind of trying to slide in there is that I think that Chevrolet, when you see what Will Power can do, they've obviously been strong at the beginning of this year. I think now they're showing their muscle in fuel economy because we're seeing that Chevrolet versus Honda with Sato, and the way he drove away from him, you're thinking, well, surely they're not on same fuel strategy, but that's very impressive. So Pagano comes out in fourth ahead of J.R. Hildebrand with whom we ride. James Jakes in the red, white, and blue car just uh, behind Hildebrand. You can hear him lift off early. That means anytime you're in fuel safe mode, if you have a little coast zone before when you lift off the throttle and hit the brake, you can kind of get that coast sensation as he approaches that corner. That's fuel safe mode. And Jan, how about this day for J.R. Hildebrand? Currently in the fifth position, and this is a guy who's not finished better than 15th this year. He told me Friday, he said, we've really improved our road and street course program, showing right now up in the fifth spot. They've had a car that's been bit too much understeer for him all day long but doing a nice job right now. Just got to be careful on that coaster especially when you've got somebody like Jake's right behind you you know to, to coast into those braking zones like that. That's hard to do when you're a race car driver. Yeah. Hildebrand and his only eyes on IndyCar series start last year here. Finished 17th. I'm sure he's anxious to get back to Indianapolis, where hopefully <laughs> he can make another quarter of a lap and win the 500. Crashing in turn four on the last lap of last year's race. As a rookie. Will Power leads the race by about four seconds over Takuma Sato. Barrichello is third, then Pagano and J.R. Hildebrand. Cars for the 38th time. The Grand Prix of Long Beach underway. In fact, we have only 14 laps to go in this race. Watching Charlie Kimball, Ryan Hunter Ray, Justin Wilson, 6th, 7th, and 8th. And back in 9th is Hinchcliffe in green. Hunter Ray's going to take a look back under Kimball. Moves to sixth. And yeah, Wilson's going to take a look. Yeah. Just a look. You see Hinchcliffe in there. Yep. Now, behind you saw Simona de Silvestro. And Stay she's, in one. Stay in one. she's receiving a penalty. So I believe that's the first drive through penalty we've seen. Here was the move. Pagano to the inside of Barrichello. And Pagano moves to third there. Rubens back to fourth position. He's got a drive through for what? For blocking. Oh, for blocking. So, to my knowledge, that's the first actual penalty that we're going to see served Who for did? Simona de Silvestro. Oh, okay. Here, she was in the back of that shot there. There must have been something that happened prior that Bo Barfield didn't like. And she's doing a drive through. The other car in this gaggle is uh, Tony Kanan back at the blue car. He's 10th. You can go as hard as you want in position two. Go as hard as you want in position two. Catch up to JR. Simona's 
done more than a drive through She's on pit lane, and uh, they're checking the motor. This group here is about 20 seconds behind the leader, Will Power. Only got 10 laps to go. We're going to take another break here so that we can finish the race for you uninterrupted. Will it be Will Power, who may have to stop for fuel, or Takuma Sato running second that wins this race? Truckers know, towing 9,000 pounds up a steep grade ain't good for your tranny. And when the heat's on, failure ain't an option. This truck's got a six-speed aluminum tranny and a big old dedicated fluid cooler. So when it's cooking on the outside, this truck won't break a sweat. Available on the full-size Toyota Tundra. If you were a race car driver, you get to say, I'm a race car driver. When people ask you what to do, I wanted to win this race so bad, you'd be a man amongst men. You'd command a rocket ship through nerve grinding courses, the world waiting for you beyond the checkered flag. And fans everywhere would follow you and your sport. On IndyCar Mobile, live in car cameras, streaming race control, and driver pit crew transmission to let you live the high octane dream. Download IndyCar Mobile now, only from Verizon. Time Indy 500 winner Elio Castro Neves returns to his native Sao Paulo, but he's not the only one out to electrify the home crowd. The Sao Paulo Indy 300, Sunday, April 29th, on the NBC Sports Network. Coming up next, the Panthers look to even the series against the Devils and Hall of Famer Martin Brodeur. Then, will the Canucks prevent the Kings from taking a shocking three-game lead? Coverage begins at 6.30 on the NBC Sports Network. Every game, every night, because it's the Cup. Back at Long Beach, California, and the 38th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach for the Ice Hot IndyCar Series. Only eight laps to go, and Will Power has a five and a half second lead over Takuma Sato. So, the, I mean, really, the big question we're looking at here is, and we're all talking during the break, does Power have enough fuel, or, or doesn't it? And I think when you watch on the track, that they are too, too smart. Tim Sindrick and company, he's under no pressure. You can see there's no way that he has any reason to push no, no, no. unless he's got plenty of fuel in hand. Rubens Barrichello gives up fourth position for his final stop, Kevin. No tires. It's going to be fuel only for Rubens Barrichello. Keep in mind, he came in only one lap earlier than Will Power. He said that's been one of the biggest challenges coming over here in Formula One. You don't work on saving fuel. Obviously, the others, like Will Power, can do it a lot better. I'm hearing it's still going to be close on Power, but it sounds like they're pretty optimistic that he's going to make the finish. That's seven laps of fuel. Yeah, how can how can one driver <laughs> that's a lot. seven laps? That's what's so amazing about power. How can he drive away from Sato, who pitted earlier, sorry, who Sato pitted later, and he drives away from him, and now they think they can make it on fuel. That, that's impressive by Chevrolet and by Will Power. Yeah, we're not at lap 85 yet. No. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying they're... But yeah, to even consider it. If they didn't think they were going to be making it, he would be standing on it, and he'd be doing qualifying-style laps. But he's not. He's just comfortably running faster than Sato, yeah, who, about, had, who, had a second yeah, who had fuel in hand. Yeah. Uh, this is for position, so here's a guy we know, pitted later, he's going to do it here in turn one. This is the crowd. Pagano yeah. takes second. <laughs> that got him fired up. Wow. You might see on the rear wing of Takuma Sato's car, Worldwide Pants. That, of course, is David Letterman's company, and uh, he is part owner of the car that Takuma Sato drives. Now, so that is what you would expect. Yep. That's one guy saving fuel. Six seconds. Six and another seconds. person not. And that's the kind of difference we're used to seeing. Right? But wow, the way look at the gap. I know. He's pulled on. I'm, we'll take a look at lap times. Right now, Pagano is quicker than Powell. That's Rob Edwards telling them he's good all the way. Still got to make up six seconds on that man right there. 
which is no small task. Yes, right now. I'll let you know when you get to start finish. This is going to be good. Guys, he's hustling. You know, he yeah. closed down on Sato at a second, second and a half a lap, so this absolutely yes, could come down eight. to the end here. Yes, we'll Let's kind of watch five. a lot of times this car and see. And guys, Tim Sendrick telling Will Power on the radio right now, Pagano coming very hard. Your five laps to go, plus five seconds. I don't think he told him he's gaining a second. Yeah, a exactly, he, Mark. <laughs> he left that part out. They like, can want to be in Pagano's spot. Absolutely. I'd much rather be chasing the rabbit at this point than have to worry about going fast enough and saving fuel. And this is a great Honda Chevrolet battle. It's what Robin mentioned earlier after getting the, the gimme, so to speak. It is probably going to come down. These cars should close up, and it could be a shootout. And again, it's kind of an engineering exercise. Okay, I stop more times than you, oh, but I'm at a higher speed. Charlie Kimball is in. Well, he's having driving, such a great run. That guy's him standing right down here in Bordet's pit. His motor is running, I think. Maybe it's a transmission issue. He can't get it into gear. Uh, that's a bummer. Pretty good battle there between Hildebrand and Hitchcliffe for sixth. And they just told James Hinchcliffe on the radio, be very careful, Justin Wilson might run out of fuel, and there he goes, yeah. diving to pit road, yep. guys. And Pasno just did a 109.7. That is, more is than, catch that's more than a second faster yeah. than power. And Tim Sendrick just told Will Power on the radio, you can pick it up a little bit. Oh, oh bit. how could he do that? Here we go. Oh, Tony Canon taking a look. Trying to get around Hildebrand. I, it is just astonishing to me that they tell Will Power you can pick it up a little bit. Rubens Barrichello, who stopped only one lap before, has had to pit many yeah. laps ago. That blows me away. Seven but laps. How you can be that much safety. better on fuel? That's that's astonishing. Tony Kanaan has turned his season around after getting off to a very bad start on both the races. Oh, and here he is. Wow, that was close. Seconds behind power now. Power's going to catch a little traffic too. Oh, EJ, that's so definitely ahead. coming to play. We know how easy Pisso is to get by. <laughs> Boy, this is what this is what Pagano wants to see. And we're coming up on two laps to go. Penske versus Schmidt Hamilton Motorsports. Sam Schmidt and Davey Hamilton own the car that Simon Pagano is in second place in. Marty. You guys, Tim Sendrick just told Will Power in the lead, go as hard as you want for these final two laps. I think we'll have the fuel to make it. How can they do that? Kevin? Will Power, as Marty said, he can go hard the rest of the way. Pagano has been able to go hard for a while, and Takuma Sato has just been told, save, save, save. If we get there, we're going to be on the podium. And Ryan Hunter Ray chasing him has very few fuel concerns either. Oh, here's well, the traffic. Gonna cost about. About. The leader behind yep. you, be careful, let him go. <laughs> Jimmy Vassar just said on the radio, Bob, let the leaders go, let the leaders go to EJ Viso. Pagano has to get through by Catherine Lake first. He does. Oh, he's gaining. He's oh. He made some ground up right here. But power still behind Viso. All right, EJ. Oh, the leader go. Going to be close, folks. Coming down for the white flag. One more lap. One more lap. I don't feel. 
officially 1.085 seconds separates first and second on the last lap and power will get by Viso into turn one putting Viso between himself and second place Pagano. That's going to cost Pagano unless Viso just pulls out of the way right here. And he, and he does. Nice. Good. Oh, he's coming. But the, the fact that they told Power that he could stand on it. Yeah. And we heard at the same time Bobby Rahal tell Sato, save, 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 and Sato stopped later. That, to me, is unbelievable. Just I really didn't think he had enough. Well, yeah. no, they, they, they want a new. Oh, oh and Sato's in trouble. Sato, third place. He was going to be on the podium. Oh, man. Not going to have enough because they're in the hairpin on the last lap, and here comes off the corner Will Power and Pagano. And Power is saying, penalty? What penalty? I don't need a penalty. I start 12th and win the 38th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Whoa! That's hard to believe. He came from ninth at Barber, comes from 12th today to win. Hard on time, good job. Woof. Look at this gaggle. <laughs> Teammates. <laughs> Catherine Lake and, si and uh, Sebastian Bourdais. Ed Carpenter is there. That's Castro, Castro Neves. Neves and Wilson. Wilson taking a look. Whoa. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, oh now it's oh, close no. to go. Barrichello gets spun, and it's a track blocker. Track, track blocked and hairpin. Yes, it is. Be very careful at the hairpin. You can hear as if somebody can, can navigate their way through that little slot. They're going to pick up a ton of positions. Serbia also involved in that, and James Jakes. Wow. But how about Takuma Sato on the last lap when he had a podium within sight? Here's what happened. He was under pressure oh. from Brian Hunter Ray and some contact, yes. it would appear, from yes. Brian Hunter Ray. The last time Ray Hall Letterman raced here at Long Beach was in 2003. Michelle Jourdain was the driver, started on the pole, finished 15th. Go, Marty. Well, Bob, I'm wondering if uh, Tim Sindrick has any fingernails left. You okay? Yeah, I mean, that's willpower for you. You can tell him what you need all day long. And, uh, you know, we got through the adversity there with the 77 knocking the tire out of the way on the first stop, or it would have been a lot easier than what it was. But, um, you know, you tell him what he needs to do, and he does it. And uh, this team, you know, they never quit. And uh, we knew this race wasn't over until we got it over with. So let's get down to how it happened. How was he able to keep distance on Sato and yet save fuel? Yeah, again, it's just we tell him a fuel number, and he knows the lap time he needs to do, and uh, we did a great job. I think, you know, Robbie and Dave with the fuel, they knew exactly where to go, and, and our strategy was really to be sure that we had enough fuel to go to the end there and push hard. We saw Pagano coming, so it's a great, great day for the Verizon program. You finally have a problem. You, your car can't get to victory lane. There's a, there's a traffic jam, Tim. It's either traffic jam or he's out of fuel. I don't know one or the other. It's a traffic jam, I'll tell you. They can't get through. Nice win for the Pinksky boys. Um, yeah, but he's getting out of the car. He may be out of fuel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, traffic jam is one thing, but... And the captain, Roger Penske, celebrates yet another victory. Team Penske has won all three races so far this year. And power is stopped because of the track blocking incident involving Barrichello, Castro Nevis, Serbia, and Jakes. But it's Will Power's 17th career win, his second consecutive this year, and his second win at Long Beach. He also was victorious here in 2008. If he makes it to victory lane, we'll talk to him when we come back to Long Beach. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach on NBC 